This beautiful computer that you see before you is my ThinkPad T440p. Uh, when I first got this thing about six months ago, I made a video about uh, replacing the display in it uh, with the, going from the old 900p TN screen to a 1080p IPS screen, uh, and also replacing the trackpad with one out of a T uh, with one out of a T450, uh, which has physical buttons at the top. Since then, it's been my main computer, and it's been perfectly fine. Uh, I have done some more upgrades to it since then. I replaced the optical drive with a, a second SSD for Linux, and I replaced the processor, which was a, a dual-core i7-4600M with a quad-core i7-4700MQ, uh, which made it a little bit faster. But there's one more upgrade I'd like to do, which is the Wi-Fi card. I've bought this. Um, okay, well, it's a pretty nice modern Wi-Fi card. It's an Intel AX210 uh, Wi-Fi 6E card, which is pretty good, and this is going to work great. The problem is that Lenovo are a bunch of assholes, and they've made it so that if you have any Wi-Fi card installed that isn't on like a very short list of officially supported cards, the computer won't boot. And this card is not on that list, it's way too new. Fortunately, you can modify the BIOS to remove that list, and that's what this video is going to be about. So first, I'm going to swap out the Wi-Fi card and show you what happens if you just try and turn it on. Actually swapping out the card is incredibly easy. It's two screws to get the bottom off. And the old Wi-Fi card is over there. So I'm going to carefully disconnect the antennas from it. Uh, remove this one screw. So that's the old card gone. Uh, here it is next to the new one. They look about the same, but let's put the new one in. I'm going to connect the antennas to this before I install it. I think that'll make it a little easier. Okay, so that's the new card installed. Uh, let's put the battery back in and try to turn the computer on. Yep, that's all you get. Unauthorized network card is plugged in, power off and remove the network card. So that's obviously not ideal, but let's see if we can fix that. So in order to modify the BIOS, I have bought a, uh, a programmer. So this is the CH341A. It's a really cheap uh, programmer. Uh, and it came with a clip and an adapter. So you connect the clip into the adapter. It's keyed so it only goes in one way. And then it's got pin, uh, pin 1 labeled here on the adapter. And on the actual programmer, it says 25 SPI BIOS and 24 I2CE PROM. This is an SPI BIOS, and it's got this little notch here in the silk screen, and that denotes the side that pin one is on. So it plugs in like this, and then you push down the lever to secure it. And that's assembled. The, um, the BIOS chip is this little chip right here, uh, and it's got a small a small dot on it here to denote where pin one is, and the pro and the the programming clip has got a red wire to denote pin one. So you got to match up pin one with pin one. So getting the clip onto the BIOS chip was a little more difficult than I expected. Uh, I did it off camera, and I also decided to disconnect the CMOS battery from it because in addition to the main battery because I don't want any power going to the BIOS chip. But now that the clip is connected, um, this program is on a short cable, I'm going to have to move the computer I'm using to program it. So I've got another laptop here and I'm going to plug the programmer into that. Okay. So I plugged the programmer into my, um, into my laptop here and uh, it's important to connect the clip to the BIOS before you plug the programmer into power because otherwise when you're moving the clip around you could short something out. So I'm going to be, I'm, this is not going to be a proper guide, 
I'll link the guide I'm following in the description, but I will point the camera at the screen in a sec and start actually doing things. It's best to do this on Linux. You can also do it on a Mac, and in a pinch you can do it on Windows, but uh, it requires special drivers that don't install properly on 64-bit versions of Windows. But anyway, there's a couple different things you need. You need a program called Flash ROM, which uh, is installed through your distribution's package manager. A program called UEFI patch that I have here. A ThinkPad UEFI sign, which I have there, and then the patches.txt file. Uh, you can open up the text file, and then uh, there's all these different patches that you can turn on and off. Um, so you should look down here, and there's a lot of different... Uh, oh, hang on. It's not scrolling very well. But there's different patches here. And these patches here are for the L540, uh, which is not the computer that I have. So these are already commented out. This is for the T440, which is also not my computer. This patch for the T440P, the W540, and the T540 are not commented out. They're enabled. They're actually going to work. So that's good. This enables an advanced menu in the BIOS. Uh, that is not critical, but I may as well do it. There are like extra power management settings you can tweak with that. I may as well have it on. And I'm going to turn this on, which gives me uh, the ability to change like XMP settings and memory timings and stuff like that. OK, now I'm going to save that. OK, so next you open a terminal window in whatever folder you're working in so you can actually dump the BIOS. I'm going to type sudo flash rom dash p ch341a underscore spi dash r and I'm going to call it uh, t440p stock dot img and type in your password. So you can see it found the flash chip and now it's reading it. Okay, so I've done that. Now the next thing you want to do is dump it again and just have another fi file called t440p stock uh, Two.img, and then that way, if there's anything that's gone wrong and you're getting like corrupted files out of it, you're not. Uh, you'll know, and you can like compare the two files and make sure that the process is working correctly. Okay, so now type diff uh, t440p stock dot img and t440p stock and nothing came up, so the files are the same, and the process worked. Now we're going to patch the BIOS, so type in dot slash UEFI patch uh, t440p stock.img, and then the name of the patch file, which I've named it patches.txt, and then dash o uh, t440p patched.img. Ooh, okay. Okay, it turns out that on Ubuntu, in order to make this work properly, you need to install a package called, uh, I'll put the name in the, I'll edit the name onto the screen, but uh, with everything installed, I can run the patches and it'll patch the BIOS. The problem is that this patched BIOS file no longer has a valid signature, and so the computer won't boot. Fortunately, there's a program you can use to sign it. Okay, so the program to sign it is... Uh, dot slash thinkpad uefi sign uh, sign dot pi t440p patched dot img dash o t440p patched signed dot img oh. okay so i had forgotten there's an additional step you have to do pip3 install pi cryptodome uh, which is necessary in order for the signing to work, but no, oh, come on. Okay, so after that whole mess, I finally fixed it. I've signed the image, and now all I have to do is type sudo flash rom uh, dash p ch three forty one a spi. Uh, dash w t 
T440P patched T440P patch.img. Okay, that's not working. I am troubleshoot a bit. In the end, all I had to do was try a second time, and now it seems to actually be successfully writing. Okay, so the BIOS has been flashed. Uh, I'm going to unplug the programmer from this laptop first before I disconnect the clip from the BIOS chip uh, because I don't want to fry anything. But now that that's done, I can put the battery back in the ThinkPad and make sure that it boots and that the Wi-Fi card works. I have pulled the uh, CMOS battery out, so it's going to have lost all of its settings. Okay, uh, so now we have this new advanced menu, which is helpful. There's a lot of stuff in there that I can play around with at some point. Uh, but the other thing is it booted up. It didn't throw a hissy fit about not having the uh, the special Wi-Fi card installed. So I can go to startup, boot, make sure that my Windows drive is selected, and exit saving change. Wow, it's really not letting me um, boot up without setting the clock. That's dumb. OK, I genuinely don't know where the date and time settings are in here, so I'm going to have to look for that. OK, so I could not get it to boot Windows properly uh, because the computer wouldn't boot unless I set the clock in UEFI mode. Uh, and I couldn't, for whatever reason, set the clock in the BIOS. I assumed that, that the BIOS patch removed that option or something. Uh, but I went and set it to legacy boot mode, and that worked. And it would boot in legacy boot mode, but changing it cleared the TPM, which had the keys for Windows's disk encryption. And so then I couldn't boot Windows because of that. But I booted into my Linux partition, and you can see the Wi-Fi works, um, and I now have a better Wi-Fi card. And I can also, hopefully, set the correct time, uh, which it already did, 18th of February 2023. Now hopefully when I shut down, I can go into UEFI mode and boot Windows. Okay, I managed to get uh, the Windows partition fixed, and hopefully Wi-Fi works. Yeah, it doesn't seem to have auto-connected, but yeah, it, it, um, it works. I can see the networks. That's great. Okay. Upgrade finished. Accept that. The only thing left to do is plug the CMOS battery back in. You can route the little cable. And then I can put the cover on. And put back both of the screws. OK, so this has not been exactly the best produced video I've ever made. But I did manage to upgrade the Wi-Fi card in this laptop and modify the BIOS, which I'm pretty happy with. Did I just do all of that while the computer was on? Yes, I did. OK, well, I've upgraded the Wi-Fi card. I've modded the BIOS. Thanks for watching.